Hey guys, welcome to my kid's bedroom. Now the bedroom is fine. It's got two twin beds and their toys. The only issue is there's not enough room for activities. So we're gonna get rid of these two twin beds and build them this built-in bunk bed that comes with a pull-out guest mattress, built-in video game console with TV, privacy shades, LED lights, and an ultra convenient fort-like top bunk. So without wasting any more time, let me show how I did it. Let's get into this video. Let's go. So here's what we're thinking for layout. The beds are gonna go this way. There's gonna be two tiers and obviously, we're gonna give it extra room for the friends to come over. A tr trendle? I believe it's called a trendle where there's a mattress down below. Then we're gonna put some stairs, built-in stairs to the side, gotta hook them up with LEDs and a built-in desk in this corner. There's not enough room in this room, so we're gonna make sure we utilize as much as we can. So without wasting any more time, let's start demoing this. Well, really there's nothing to demo. We're just gonna get rid of everything. Yeah, take the boys' stuff down. I'm gonna scan for all the studs and I'm just gonna put a piece of tape there. Therefore, when I'm starting assembling everything, I know exactly where my anchors are. So I made up a rough little sketch of how I want this bunk beds to look. As you can see, this is the trendle right below here. That's the pullout. First mattress, second mattress, these are the stairs, and this is a little built-in desk that we're gonna do. Now this is just a rough size of it, so the mattress that we're doing are twin size mattresses, they're 39 by 75 inches. I made them an inch and a half more on each side. By the time we put, start wrapping it with MDF or plywood, whatever we do, we'll account for it. I have here 120 bucks worth of two by fours and two by sixes. I'll start building the framing out of it first, stack the two by fours for the pillars, attach everything to the wall. The outlet is always going to be in the way of framing. Always. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the stretchers. I'm calling it stretchers, but that's the part that the mattress sits on. Here's what I'm going to do. They're done out of two by sixes. By my calculations, based off of the mattresses that we're using, uh, I got 75 inch for the front or the sides, and then the 34 inch plus a couple other inches is gonna be part of the post is gonna be for the head and footer. Here's how we're gonna assemble them. We're gonna put pocket holes on ends and then secure it with wood glue into the sides of the post and then obviously the back part is gonna go into the drywall. Now, you probably saw what I got cut here. These are gonna go just for the very top bunk to hold the whole structure together. I guess if that makes sense, but I'll show you in a second. It's, it's really basic. And you know what? I've made a bunk bed before. Why don't you go check out the video? I'm just doing a little bit different approach this time. So I'm gonna leave about 12 inches at the bottom for the lower guest um, trendle mattress section. Then from that point on, I'm gonna split the difference here. These are nine foot tall ceilings, leaving 44 inches probably down the middle from the lowest bunk to the top bunk. When it comes to building anything, don't matter. If it screws, it could never hurt putting wood glue in there. In fact, it's preferred. Okay, originally I was gonna keep the studs and the stretchers as is, but then I was started thinking, by the time we start wrapping it with MDF or plywood or whatever it is, the less step downs that we have in these corners, the easier to wrap this thing will be. On the sides here, we're gonna put a couple of more pieces of you know two by six in order to fill it in. And because this is three and a half inches, we'll have to use one, two, you know, two by six plus another half inch to make this width.
the scenario is gonna be this. I am gonna not put a desk here because how close it is to the bathroom here. So what I'm doing is putting some reinforcing pieces here, obviously closing off on the bottom over there because that's gonna be the support for the other side of the stairs. We have about an eight uh, inch run uh, or a stretch, and then they're about 19 inches tall. Um, we can only do three steps here. So I'm gonna get another piece right here. The idea is gonna wrap everything with uh, MDF. steps are miserable to figure out in the space that we have, but I think we finally got something. Uh, we got three of them, a good platform from the top. They're about seven inches deep. I'm um, just putting a couple of reinforcing brackets along the side. One more reinforcing piece down the middle of each step. Next up on the agenda is start wrapping this puppy with plywood, the sheeting really. It's half inch maple ply. I'm gonna start wrapping the outside and the inside here. And then we're gonna start wrapping the bottom part there and start working away on the stairs. I learned things the hard way. I should have put the plywood on first and then built the stairs. Now what I have to do is actually cut out each step and have a fitted piece of plywood. I made all my measurements right over here. I hope you guys can see that. Traced everything out, measured, double check. So now I'm gonna use my reciprocating saw. No, that's not a reciprocating saw, is it? It's a jigsaw. Hindsight, put the sheet on, then build your stairs. Let's go see how we did. You're probably thinking you are nuts. What are you doing closing that up? There will be a window opening, maybe a circular, whatever. I just need to play around some tape to see what's the best dimensions to really make the area fit. Because I can't have the stairs, you know, overly too comfortable because of the space and the slope, I decided to extend the tops of the stairs, the, the, the treads, uh, by an extra inch and a half. That will give the kids step, basically a bigger step to be on and less chances of ending up in the ER. Our oldest boy, Jack, who's eight right now, he really loves video games. Nintendo Switch is his jam. I think what we're gonna do is for this lower bunk, I'm gonna hang a small TV right here, nothing big. I'm gonna put a couple of reinforcing pieces for the plywood to hold on to the sides, with pocket holes, of course. And then one sheet here, with the same sheet on the other side, and it will look really nice. All right, so for this window here, I, I'm not gonna make it straight, but I'm gonna make a little bit of a, I don't know, like an egg. That's not an egg, is it? It's gonna have curved edges. Anywho, I gave it enough space that the kid won't fall out. I think I gave it a roughly around, but the mattress ends here, so probably like 10 inches. To get a good clean cut, a couple of things had to be taken into consideration. Masking tape is the solution. I'm gonna put it on top, I'm gonna cut over it, and then to prevent the tear it on the other side, I have to do the same thing. So I'll do a little bit of measuring, put tape on both sides, put my little pilot hole with the drill and start with the jigsaw. If everything goes, if I follow the rules correctly, it should be perfect. How clean and crisp are these cuts, man. Now that I think sheeted up, we're gonna start trimming things off and the big idea behind it is give it a little more character, but at the same time conceal all of this exposed uh, plywood grain. It'll make it look really nice. But the corners, I'm probably gonna stack them under an L shape, so we'll hug it around. If you just get the one by two MDF that's already primered, it's actually like half the price. So each one of these is like $3.50 or four bucks or something like that. I love this radius. It's something a little bit different. It makes the upper bunk a little bit more of like a four-ish kind of feeling. I don't know how to kind of dress this up well enough when it comes to trim. If you guys have ideas, I'd love to hear them in the description below. But as it stands, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the remaining one by two to do a rail and a style and then get a piece of MDF and then replicate this little corner to put in there. That will keep this radius while kind of filling in the, um, the, the trim, I guess. <laughs> I need to mount the side rails that the cleats are gonna sit on, which holds the mattress. And I just picked two by two material. I'm gonna cut it to length and screw it into the sides, both on top and bottom bunk. We're gonna fill all the nail holes. Don't put too much, therefore you don't have to sand too much. So nice 
and light scrape uh, for transitions where the trim pieces meet. We're gonna fill that with caulking because uh, this stuff will probably crack. This main piece, which is probably the heaviest part, is brand nailed on. What I don't want is my kid to like punch with his feet out. I'm gonna put in maybe four screws on the bottom and four screws on top that'll go through the two by sixes. While the wood filler is drying, perfect time to start working on the trendle. That's the mattress part that sticks out. I'm gonna try making everything out of just one single sheet because one sheet is like 80 something bucks. So it's ridiculous. We're gonna do what we can. I'm gonna rip it to 73 inches long. That's basically the width, max width, the entry. We're gonna make size with whatever left over based on my calculations, just three and a half, just fine. And here we have, this is gonna be our mattress holder, the trendle. I'm gonna give it a quick round over, give it some sanding, get rid of these harsh spots. So I got my casters right here. They're uh, the rubberized ones. They're not gonna scratch the floors. I should have picked up one more down the middle for support so it doesn't start bending downwards. In the meantime, I'll install whatever I have right now. Maybe bring them a little bit away from the corners to distribute the weight and then I'll pick up one more to distribute the weight. I'll we'll start sanding and caulking all these joints. So what I'm doing is right before I'm gonna start caulking everything, I'm using just a damp rag. And what I'm doing is it's collecting all the little tiny dust particles. And it'll help to make sure that the caulking that we put on doesn't gunk up with the sawdust that's already there. All right guys, time for paint and primer. The days of me rolling on, brushing on paint are over, so we're gonna be shooting the stuff with Wagner, the HVLP sprayer. HVLP is high volume, low pressure. Very simple to use. This is the Flexio 3500. It's awesome. It has a detachable canister that's right here. You can go big one, you can go small one. I am a big fan of the small one. It's got excellent control, minimum or overspray, not to mention when you do it inside the house. It comes out great. I'm gonna use the regular old latex primer. Mix it up, dilute it by 10% water, pour it in here, and start shooting. All right, let's spray. All right, prime is on, everything's looking good. It's drying really quickly. Uh, well, waiting for a surprise. I'm gonna go wash this Flexio 3500 and get ready for the new paint. Here is the paint, it's from Advanced. Well, it's, it's a Benjamin Moore paint, but the product is Advanced. This is the stuff you use on uh, doors, uh, uh, baseboards, heavy duty stuff. Um, this is the product I used on the media console, the entertainment station, have you seen it? Go check it out. But the color is, wasn't prepared for this part. Hail Navy. It's a, uh, well, it's like this uh, darkish, charcoalish, what seems like there's a hint of blue in there, but we'll see. Okay, so we have our base coat on, applying really well, drying really well, I guess that's the theme here. I'm gonna throw maybe two more coats on so it's just nice and solid, and I'll see you guys in the morning for assembly. All right, folks, the paint is dry, it's looking great. Today is assembly day, right now it's 9 a.m. Kids don't get home from school till four, and I wanna surprise them this whole thing put together. First order of business, we're gonna do some LED lights. I'm gonna wrap it on top and the bottom, and we'll use the power source underneath the steps to power everything. Let's do it. Hey, we got LEDs working. Cool. 
All right, so the mattress cleats. These are the one by four common wood, which is the cheapest kind of wood you can find. I bought 13 pieces that are 10 foot long that was able to cover both. It cost me roughly around 110 bucks. You can use plywood, which actually has a little bit more flex to it and durability, but it'll probably end up saving you an extra 10. So you can do either or. This guy's good. You should go subscribe to his channel. It works. I wish I had something like this when I was a kid. All right, so for the drawer face here, I wanted to simplify it, but also make it a little bit of an accent piece. So I, instead of using plywood, I picked up some of this project paneling, glued up that they have already prefabbed at your local hardware store. It's usually between 28 and 30 bucks, which is a little pricey, but it works out way better than buying a full sheet of plywood. For the stain on it, this is a semi-transparent uh, oak. Nope, walnut, that's what it is. So I'll secure it in place, put a couple of knobs, and then we'll throw a mattress in there. All right, let's talk about the price breakdown of this project. The lumber was roughly around $800, if not $900. TV with the mount was $150. Paint was $65. The curtains were $50 with the rods, and the LED lights were $18. All in all, making this project roughly around over $1,000. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around and watching yet another one of my videos. You guys know this, it means the world to me. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell that way you'll be alerted every time a new video comes out. Make sure you connect with me. All the social media links, including my merch section, will be in the description below, as well as I have a Patreon support group where I have one hour long extended versions of these videos where there's a lot of super useful stuff that we didn't put into an 18 minute video a lot of information, go check it out. It all helps support this channel and keep these videos coming. Remember guys, I am not a trained professional. We're just embracing courage and sweat. We need the courage to try these projects and the sweat, the hard work to go through them. Tune out this week, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye. This is the stuff I actually like to pick. It's less brittle than some of the other stuff. This is the little cute TV that I bought for like 130 bucks. Fun fact, this is how you'd make floating shelves. So you'd make these two by fours, connect them to the side of the walls and then cover them with plywood or whatever.